Well, hello again. We're back. Um, I've been sitting here. I just said it. Um, I've been trying to break myself from saying um. For some reason, yeah, I talk to people in person. I I've taught classes in classrooms and never said um. But for some reason, talking to a camera. I say it. Anyway, where we're at now, at this point, I've got, we're completely done underneath the radio. Everything's uh, all hooked up, all the wiring. You notice uh, along here, I have uh, run that wire all along this left apron, both the power cord as well as the power leads up to the switch made sure to keep plenty of room so when the screws go in we don't hit anything there same way as over here these wires are shoved away so the screws can go in and not hit any of the wires the uh, now all the components in I this was that sand ohm resistor it was power 5 watt power resistor I didn't have the right value it's a 12k uh, so what I did was uh, I put 222k uh, 5 watt resistors in parallel that gives me 11k it's actually just well oh, a little above that about 11.5 uh, 11.5k so that's plenty close enough for that resistor for that dropping resistor everything else has been made connections to now the next thing I've got to do I've got pretty well started putting stuff on on the top together uh, the all the backing plate that uh, sets behind the dial face glass face the brown paint on it had brown paint on it so, so the letters and, and numbers would show up good. It was kind of scratched up pretty good, some flakes missing and stuff, so I went ahead and painted it. I've got it set and drying. And uh, let's see, what else? Uh, I went ahead and painted, the pointer was pretty dull, almost no paint left on it, so I went ahead and painted it. I'm completely out of white paint. I thought I had still had some. This is kind of a little bit off white, but I think it'll be just fine. This should show up just fine without any problems. Let's see. But this is where we're at right now. Um, we're fully wired up completely. Our antenna leads hooked up over here. Grounds hooked up, tuning condensers hooked up. So, now one thing I forgot to do on the last uh, video on this, the video before that, I asked a question about the power supply and when its location, and I meant to answer that uh, question last time, and I totally slipped my mind to do that it's located over here uh, the rectifier sets down underneath here you have your oscillator coil here there's three-eighths of an inch between it and the, and the pins on the uh, rectifier tube my question was all this AC that's here, a high voltage AC, why is that a problem with the front end? I mean, it's 60 cycles, it's AC radiating 60 cycles at pretty high voltage. Shouldn't it be a problem for this? Why not put the power supply somewhere else and get away from the front end, which is the most sensitive part of the radio? Well, the main reason, there's several actual reasons. Uh, First of all, when you work on the front end, the one thing about 
you know, it's important with the wire dressing. The entire radio is important about wire dressing. But one of the things that is always said and always done is to keep the leads fairly short on in the front end areas where the oscillator, the antenna coils, the oscillator mixer tube is. That isn't so much because of this power supply and it's 60 cycles. That's more so that if, if you had leads that were fairly long and you had a couple different coils and in this case since there's uh, three different bands I've got more coils than that these could start radiating and interfering with each other you uh, basically you can get the oscillator to go off frequency due to other types of regeneration or even degeneration on feedbacks because the wires are too long because the frequencies are close the input and output of the tube the oscillator tube but also you can actually get the mixer part of the tube to actually oscillate too I mean it's got an input grid and it's got an output if those leads are long enough and they either capacitive couple or they couple with some of these coils from the oscillator or the antenna coil or anything then it could give some problems because the frequencies are close but this is 60 cycle these here are running in much higher frequency several hundred kilohertz into the megahertz so this is not going to present that kind of problem because of such a low frequency you know granted the tuner and the antenna coil combination filter is broadband it's not that broadband it's a lot narrower band than that <coughs> excuse me the other thing that you the only time that even the possibility that this could give any problems would be if it could inject a signal in that could get past the IF well in order to do that you'd have to get into about the 7th 8th harmonic of this frequency to do that and by the time you get to that level no matter how much power you're pumping out of here it's an extraordinarily weak signal that would get lost and attenuated even before because it's not going to be dead exact so it'll never make it through so between all the different filterings that's going on here the tuner and everything else plus the IFs and this being such a low frequency at 60 cycles it does not present a problem here over here is a total different story in the audio section you have no filters the only type of filtering you have in here would be like a tone control and that's actually to take out the high sides and not the low sides and this is the low side so you know your tone controls generally are designed more to bring in bass well 60 cycles is pure bass so if it was over in here it would seriously cause a lot of problems over here and you would definitely hear a hum that there's nothing you can do to get rid of it so they try to keep the power supply as far away from the audio circuit not the front end mainly because the frequency differences the filtering differences and uh, and the like now the next step I'm working on a speaker turned out the speaker for this the field wine, uh, field coil is open so I found, I've got another speaker but I have to uh, I already pulled the plug off the old speaker this is the pl uh, plug that sets on the speaker to plug in here and then plus I also got to change the transformer over the audio transformer and I get that done and get it up and working now some other things I ran into uh, the volume control well not in this one I already fixed that but I already started working playing around with the other radio and I ran into an interesting thing with the volume control on it. It had been a replacement and it was open 
so you know I took it apart to see if I could clean it or anything well it turns out <laughs> they're junk this is the piece this is your resistance piece that's in there that your wiper runs across it is nothing but a piece of cardboard with some graphite put on it and it had drawn moisture now I opened it up some here which made more bends in it but this part here was completely gone now I tried a, an old trick it's black now and the old trick is is that you can lay down new graphite from a lead pencil in small areas you don't want to do the whole darn thing because you'll throw way off you won't ever get it right but it had these other little breaks too all through here and what it is, it's just it, it get, draws moisture and it swells and then it contracts and swells and starts wrinkling up the little bit of uh, paper that the graphite's adhered to and separates just like if you take any piece of cardboard and get it wet, it'll start separating it in layers. Well, I thought, well, okay, fine. I'll see, I've got a bunch of old, new old stock controls and stuff well I went out and found one and lo and behold it was open and uh, its primary open area was it done the same thing and it never even been used it just sitting on the shelf I mean for many years probably but it opened up here uh, they're just these stupid little bake light ones I don't I think I got another one here. I can show you the total thing. I was thinking I did have, but, um, but I brought a couple of them in. But no, I don't. So anyway, I'll have to try to maybe pick get another one out and show it to you what they look like but while I was messing with that that's where I got uh, the one can condenser that I uh, cut open with the knife uh, which by the way uh, Brett had uh, made a comment with a great tip on that how to open those up these style here with the cans like this or any can that you want to cut open instead of uncrimping and it's and his channel is Brett and Brett I'm gonna destroy your last name Froween or Frowine F R O H W E I N anyway his tip was a tubing cutter you know like you use on plumbing uh, for copper piping you can pick those up any hardware store, any lumber yard, you know, Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot, any of those places, uh, home, other home supplies, even farm supply places, uh, even automotive, uh, you know, you can get them anywhere. But they'd be great because, for one thing, now this is not so bad on these kind of cans because you do have something to go by when you're cutting, but. You know, some of these cans actually clamp in, and you can, you know, they'll have the same type of top. You end up cutting, you can cut down here where the clamp is, because the clamp's going to hold it back together for you. But using the knife, you've got to be real gentle, uh, real slow about it, mainly because your tracking will get off. You know, you'll start, end up going off at an angle like this, and then by the time you come around, your start point was here and your end points here and you got you know big gap a tubing cutter wouldn't do that it's going to track perfectly straight all the way around it's going to make it a lot quicker and a lot easier in the process though of tearing this one apart ran across something rather interesting uh, for one thing it still had virtually all the dry chemical in it now these are actually liquid they're wet they're supposed to be full of liquid. It had all dried out into this powder. That's all that's left. Uh, it, it's basically boric acid and a few other little chemicals in there. 
but also I found in there these little pieces right here well that's part of the anode plate that has started deteriorating uh, I've never actually seen one go this far I've seen some of them have a little bit of discoloration but it came off here just started corroding away and deteriorating away and places here holes through it and everything plus it's fully discolored and uh, I spread this out so you can see it. They should normally be like this together and they should be shiny uh, like that. Another style is like this. Just a different design. This is what insulates them from the can. This sets inside the can here and then those set inside here that's your anode. This is your anode, goes in here. This is the insulator, goes in here. And then your negative or cathode. Well, this one also had a very badly just, it warped and just like it got hot. I, I'm thinking that's what it was doing. It was getting awful hot, may have been badly leaking and shorting. See, this should be nice and smooth and not all these dents and, and stuff in them. Now, I'm going to put in the description a site if you want to learn more about these or dry electrolytic capacitors. There's a site on the internet called faradnet.com. It's F A R A D N E T dot com and they talk all about this and several others plus the dial the dry uh, electrolytics they talk about the electrolytes how they're made and everything else <coughs> excuse me and uh, so I'll put the link of that actual page for this and then you can just go through the site and look at other stuff uh, for that in the description uh, I think that's about it. I gotta soak the knobs up and get them cleaned up. And um, I can't think of anything else uh, before we ever button this thing up. I think on the next video I'm running a little long on this one. Uh, I want to, you know, kind of go over some ex, uh, some other stuff because this one's kind of easy to see but talk about the band switch and how you tell the numbers where they are I mean you got numbers on the schematic but where do they relate here so in the next video I'll talk about that so until then thanks for your comments thank you for all the new subscribers out there um, and uh, you guys that you have given me such wonderful comments. I really appreciate them. And I think I'm kind of getting used to dealing with Google Plus and stuff, but um, still having troubles with Joe. But I did do what one, um, and I'm sorry, I forgot who it was that suggested it. I think it was Bobby that did. I went to his page and uh, just put a message right on his page and was able to answer his comments but anyway that's where we're at and thank you and uh, I'll see you the next time bye